for joining us for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. We take a subject, we dig into it in depth, and today Kyle is going to dig after all those shrooms in the landscape and the trees and all those places where those of us who really are, are wanting a morel are gonna to have to try to figure out what else to eat, perhaps, right? Kyle? Yeah, yes, perhaps. And again, always, always have to be mindful about eating mushrooms that you find in the landscape, um, unless you are 100% sure and have the experience um, and the expertise. It's really recommended not to eat anything that you find while out foraging, just because there are a lot of lookalikes and um, some of them can be, some of them can be quite toxic. So some always of them be careful. Can be Toxic enough to go belly up? Uh, there are there are a few. <laughs> Luckily, not in Nebraska, we don't have a ton of those, um, but we certainly have those that will cause oh, we'll say gastrointestinal distress. <laughs> in other words, worse so, than the flu. Yes. Yep. So let's start with your mask. Can you identify the mushrooms on your mask? Well, it's sort of hilarious. Yeah, we have a, there, there's a few of few different ones on here. Um, I know the, we have a, an oyster mushroom and and then some bowl eats as well, and and kind of just oh, so, oh there we go. So the yellow one here is one of our kind of standard standard oyster mushrooms um, and. A bolete, kind of the bolete class right, right over here is what we're looking at. And one of, one of these down here is uh, more like one of our agarics. And so the agarics, those do tend to be some of our, some of our more, uh, more poisonous ones. And so there is kind of a general rule of thumb that if you do see, do see mushrooms with red caps um, when you're out foraging or anything like that, you probably just want to steer clear of them. Um, again, like I said, they're not, not the most common in Nebraska, and there are some edible mushrooms with red caps. However, some of the most poisonous mushrooms do tend to, um, do tend to have those red caps too. So. Excellent. So we want to invite our audience, of course, to comment and tell us what you think about this segment. Send us all of your cool information because Kyle is gonna do an excellent job of starting with ID, right? Is that how we're gonna to start tonight since you also brought lots of other props? And I know you sent some great pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we certainly can. Um, so yeah, really when, when thinking about mushroom ID, we wanna take a lot of pictures. Um, and so there are, are a few different things to, a few different things, things that we would like to look for whenever we are um, looking at, at mushrooms and so, First is, are there, um, where is the mushroom growing? Is it growing in the lawn? Is it growing on a tree? Uh, you know, where, really, where are we seeing it? Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And then the next thing we often want to think about is, are there, is there a central stem to this mushroom? And so again, that can help differentiate some of our polypores um, from our more standard, um, standard mushrooms. And then once we've decided whether, um, once we've decided that there is a, a central stem, our, what do the what does the underside of the cap look like? Do we have do we have some nice gills like on on this one here, or is it more more pores? Um, and so, again, the the gilled mushrooms. Here we go. Um, a lot, of, a lot of different types of mushrooms do have, do have gills. Uh, the one that I'm holding up right now is, uh, this is a Lepiota, or in the genus Lepiota. One of our common parasol mushrooms. It is fairly dried, but you can really see th those gills um, kind of all the way throughout. And now compare that to this other one, and this is a polypore um, mushroom. This is actually a turkey tail, um, is the, the common name for it. But if we zoom in, we can really see that is there's just a whole bunch of tiny, tiny pores um, on the underside of it. You may also get some larger holes, kind of like um, kind of like we were seeing on this, because in addition to people, a lot of other things eat mushrooms too. There's a lot of insects that do, other animals that eat them. Um, deer are are very prolific um, mushroom eaters as well. Well, and I know the one with the gills. If if you buy beautiful big mushrooms at the grocery store to stuff, those are typically something that has the gills. Yep, they are. And yep, and um, I know everybody always always thinks about the, uh, um, 
Oh, I'm drawing a blank on the button. Or uh, yep, um, yep, but buttons. buttons are the yeah. um, the big ones, and yep, and they they do have nice gills underneath them. But mm -hmm. one of the things with those mushrooms with gills, you want to be when you're cleaning them, a lot of stuff can get caught up in those gills too. And mm -hmm. so again, a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of other fungi, a lot of insects, just a lot of a lot of soil, a lot of dirt. So when cleaning them. Um, Always a good idea just to take maybe a damp paper towel and kind of dab underneath those um, to try to get as much of the excess stuff out from those gills as possible because they can, can really impact the flavor on occasion. Cool, all right, so what else did you bring? And then we'll go to your picture. All right, well, um, again, so have a, just a few, a few dried ones. I went out, went out three different times foraging um, within the last couple of days, and I, I couldn't find anything. Part of this may have been the fact that I had a 15-month-old toddler at my heels, and she wasn't moving the quickest either. Um, so, but luckily, we can, we can preserve a lot of mushrooms, and so I, I did, did bring some of uh, some older ones that we had. Um, right here, I'll go ahead and hold up one of our. One of our more prized mushrooms, and I apologize um, for the the color. Um, when this was collected, it was bright orange, um, bright orange, and it was growing about 10 feet up a tree, um, which is very typical of our chicken of the woods um, fungi or hen of the woods fungi. Mm -hmm. Very very tasty um, if you are if you are out out eating them. And uh, some of the other. Um, Another one that I had brought out, and this one was also um, collected off of a tree, but this is a Tremedes, um, in the genus Tremedes, but just kind of bright red, and this is the this is the top side of it, and then again, if we look at the look at the bottom side, mm -hmm. and it's, this is going to be tough to see, but this is another one of our polypore um, polypore mushrooms, and so just a whole bunch of little tubes um, in the bottom side of that. And let's see, another one that, this was one that was found on a, um, actually grown out of an apple tree stump. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a turkey tail fungus. Um, and so I have, I have two different types of turkey tails here. Again, turkey tail is one of the, one of the common names um, for it. But there can really be a, really be a difference in, in color variation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're kind of this bright, bright red and and oranges and things like that. In other cases, like we have on this smaller one, um, it's almost you know a lot of a lot more grays and almost some blues that we're seeing, that we're seeing as well. Um, but again, when when fresh, I've I've said this a few times. Pathologists aren't the greatest at naming things, and the same kind of goes for a lot of my, um, mushroom experts as well. They look like a turkey tail, mm -hmm. um, and they do actually. And there's even kind of a, a small. Um, you can even feel some some small small hairs on the a little on the tip. feathers. Exactly. Perfect. So <laughs> fun. So that is that. Um, another one. Uh, another one of our more more prized mushrooms that I brought. This is a this is an oyster mushroom, um, and so a pleurus pl um, is the the, um, the scientific name for it. Um, again, typically is growing growing on wood. This is not one that you won't see that you will see sprouting out of your lawn. But one of the things that is kind of um, helps to identify a lot of our oyster mushrooms is if we look at the gills. Oh, there we go. Notice that the gills um, they start at the cap, but then they also tend to run down, mm -hmm. as opposed to some of the other. Um, some of the other mushrooms, as it, like this, um, like the lepiota one that we have, where we have the gills that just end right at the right at where that central stem is, mm -hmm. and so again, some more ways to differentiate those mushrooms: do the gills, are they, um, do they run down the stem, or do they kind of stop at the stem as well? Awesome, excellent. Those are uh, fun and interesting. So. You also brought or sent us a whole bunch of pictures. A whole bunch of pictures. Let's yes. start with those, and you can talk a little bit about each one of those. As yeah. we, uh, I think your first one up is maybe a, another parasol. Yep. Yeah. I'm so, not mistaken, so it, it is, yep. and so that's actually um, what a fresh, a fresh version of the um, the one that I was showing, and this one is 
quite large. Um, they're not always this big, but this specimen um, was about eight inches in diameter, um, so not quite the size of a dinner plate, but, but again, pretty, pretty large. These are the ones that you will commonly see and you're just popping up in your yard. Um, and again, they're often, they're feeding on some sort of woody, um, some sort of woody material, whether that's old mulch, whether that's tree roots, um, some sort of woody material a little bit further down, further down in the soil profile. But when people think of mushrooms, this tends to be what they, what they really think of. Mm -hmm. um, and they start like, a closed umbrella, or they, closed, and then they open. Yep, and then they, they will slowly open, yeah. slowly or or overnight open, or, um, right. <laughs> depending on depending on the environmental conditions. But if we have, oh, kind of moderate to warm temperatures and adequate moisture, these things really can appear appear overnight. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, your next one. We get this one all the time. This is. Stinkhorn. Stinkhorns, and so these are the stinkhorn eggs, actually. Um, and there was somebody else who sits, who was occasionally sits on the uh, sits on the backyard farmer panel, who one time <laughs> collected some what he thought were stinkhorn eggs. They were actually snake eggs instead. Oh. So, so Dennis had a uh, Dennis had a field day with them, <laughs> but these stinkhorns, um, we'll, we'll often find these showing up. Um, usually in mulch beds, mm -hmm. and they'll come up, um, be bright orange or a bright red color, and as the name implies, they, they smell. Mm -hmm. Then if you dig down six to eight inches, um, this is where we, this is what we tend to find, are these actual eggs. Mm -hmm. And every year when we have in adequate environmental conditions, that stink horn just pops back up. Cool. I think uh, we might have a picture of them. Yep, split yep. open. Yeah, and there yeah. you can even we can even see the um, see the the mushroom inside mm -hmm. of or the fruiting body that will eventually um, poke its head out of the ground. Fun. All right, your next one is a chicken of the woods in the tree. I think. Yep, it is. And so that's the that's the color that um, that the one that I had collected originally originally it had again not not the same one, but um, chicken of the woods mushrooms. And really, a lot of the a lot of the mushrooms that we find growing on trees, they are a, they they can be a sign of not the greatest tree health right. because they are feeding on that hardwood, mm -hmm. um, and so there is either there is a wound, um, some sort of opening that allowed that fungus to to get in, and it is rotting away the inside of the inside of the tree. So just something to keep keep an eye on. All right, your next one looks like. Hare's ear. Yes, um, and so um, some of our general general cup fungi. Um, there are a few different types of cup fungi. Um, also, they um, sometimes some, sometimes they'll almost be um, referred to as oh, uh, bird's nest, bird's um, nest is another right. one that we yeah. often see. The bird's nests are quite a bit smaller, but these these cup fungi. They will then they tend to produce the spores down inside the middle of that the middle of that cup there. Mm -hmm. Very fun. And then we have everybody's favorite puff ball. A puff ball, yes. Um, and a lot of different types of puff balls that are out there. Um, sometimes we have, they're, they're going to be kind of this darker um, yellowish brown color, or they might be bright white. Um, you know, I think every year you'll, you'll see, it, see a picture from somewhere in the south of somebody who's collected a puff ball that's the size of your head. Right. Um, and, and you did a movie, I think. Uh, yeah, and so I hope that yeah, hope that the movie yeah. worked. But um, and so that little <laughs> that little puff of dust that came out, those are all of the fungal spores. Mm -hmm. And so as we're as we're out walking around, stepping on puff balls, things like that, that forces those spores out. Mm -hmm. They will then land um, on another piece of woody tissue and um, start the whole cycle over again. Yeah. Those are fun. All right, so then we have edible versus not with the fabulous morel. Yeah, and so this is the this is the time of year when everybody wants to be out wants to be out finding morels. Mm -hmm. And aside from from one person that I know, everybody's only found a couple. <laughs> um, and so it's we'll see. I, um, the hope is that with the, with some of the recent moisture that we had, um, and now that temperatures are a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. that, that morels will become a little bit more common. Mm -hmm. But, um, so we have the morels, um, and they are, 
it, this is, so this is our very, very typical morel. If you look down towards the base, we can see um, the little st the stem that, that appears there. And then the very um, prototypical cap or, or head that, that we have with, with those morels. And then the second, the one that's the next one is the false. Is the false morel, yep. yep. Um, and so this one um, is false morels. If they really don't look a whole lot like the, like the true morels, but if to an untrained eye, they can be fairly easily mistaken. But these false morels, they almost just look like a brain. Um, and so if you imagine a kind of dark reddish brown brain sitting on the ground, that tends to be what our, what our false morels look like. All right, and don't eat them. Don't eat them. Um, another good way to differentiate a true morel from a false morel is to split it open. Mm -hmm. And if it's hollow on the inside, it's a true morel. If it's not hollow on the inside, it's gonna be a false morel and you'll want to leave that one alone. All right, and then, so we have a little bit of ID, I think, in our, our few remaining minutes. The first being the puff ball again. Yes. So we yeah. identify those by the puff. Exactly, just by the puff. Um, and so I had, I had mentioned, we kind of want to look, so is there is there a central stem that we're seeing on the mushroom? And puff balls, there tends, there tends not to be. Now, if we look towards the base of this picture, we can see where it originated, but there's not, there's not a stem, not a stalk that, that we're seeing, or, or stipe is the, is the actual term for it. Mm -hmm. But they're just much, much more round um, than our other ones. And the next picture that we ha should have. Central stem and cap. Exactly, there yep. Um, and so these are um, much more common for, or at least mushrooms that are showing up in the yard where we do have that, have that nice central, that nice central stem. Mm -hmm. this, is, um, this is another one that as it, as it opens up, uh, this is a Lepiota mushroom, and, um, a, different, a different species. But as it opens up, that cap really will get quite a bit larger and we'll be able to see the gills on the underside of that cap too. All right, and then I think we have a picture of the underside gills. Yep, um, and again, uh, it's just very important to, to be looking at, looking at all parts of that mushroom, mm -hmm. the top of the cap, the bottom of the cap, all these differences really can go a long way in, in helping to identify them. All right, you have a polypore underside. Next. Yeah, and so this is, a, um, this is the, the underside of a pheasant's back mushroom, also known as a dryad saddle. Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, they, these, are, these can get quite large, um, so, 12 inches across, we have the great, um, the great size identifier there at the bottom of this mm -hmm. picture. Always wanna send in um, something so we have an idea of how big this picture is. And as you can see, this, this, um, this pheasant's back is over a foot, over a foot in diameter. Is um, that an edible one or no? Uh, at this point, no. Um, however, when, when fresh, they are, um, they, they actually can be fairly tasty. Unfortunately, they, they dry out pretty quickly, and once they're dried and a little bit old, I've been, I haven't eaten an older one, but I'm told they taste um, just kind of like cardboard. Yeah. So, so if you wanna eat cardboard, then you can eat them, but um, it's not recommended. All right, your next one is the ash bolete. Yes, um, and so this is this uh, the ash bolete is one of the one of more one of the more interesting ones. It's not not a true bolete, um, but this one is always found in association with ash trees. Mm -hmm. It actually um, so it's a combination of the ash tree, um, an insect that feeds on the ash tree, and this mushroom. Mm -hmm. And so the the insect is actually feeding on the the ash the roots of the ash tree. That allows the ash bully to colonize those roots and, and they pop up out of the ground. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to mention with this picture is these mushrooms are growing in clumps. And so when we are looking at mushrooms that are on the ground or even on trees, are they growing in clumps or are they growing more singularly? Mm -hmm. Fun, and I think your last one before we close is the paracel with rings and gills. Yeah, and so here we have uh, just another picture of that, um, of one of those large, large paracel mushrooms that so often show up in the lawn. Um, really good picture of the, of the underside of the gills there. We can see that the gills don't go down the stem at all. The other thing that we can see here is 
that there is a ring mm -hmm. around that stem. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the presence of a ring is another um, determining factor when helping to identify mushrooms too. Awesome, that was great, Kyle. We hope you enjoyed digging deeper with Kyle and yes, don't eat those mushrooms without knowing what uh, you're eating. You can watch us, of course, at 8 p.m. on Thursdays on Facebook. Give us your contact or your, con your comments and thanks for digging deeper with us on Backyard Farmer. Thank you.